Hello, my name is Art Hicks with Vivescape, and I'm going to show you how to build a REST-based web service from Visual Studio 2013. Uh, what we're going to start off by doing is just show you a little bit about how this project is set up. What we've done is we've just created a project in Visual Studio, um, just a blank ASP.NET project. And if you don't know how to do that, you just click on File, New, Project. And I've got a lot of templates in mind, but you should see ASP.NET Web Project. Once you choose that, it's going to ask you what type. We just chose empty. I've already done that, so um, I'll go ahead and <laughs> reopen my project here since I just closed it. And what you're going to see, it's going to create none of this. You're just going to have web config. Um, and properties, some of these with nothing in it, just your base references, nothing else. Uh, the first thing we're going to do since we're making it a web service, just so we don't have to do it later, is let's go ahead and add the reference. Um, that at references we're going to use starting out, and one in particular is the system service model dot web. You're going to need that later when we create our web service. So we just need to go ahead and add this reference because it doesn't add it at first when you first create your project. Go ahead and click OK. OK. So next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and look at the web config just to get that ready because I'm going to explain that. Um, First things first, what we're going to do is we're going to create our API service. So what you want to do is to right click on the project name, hit add, and you can choose new item. And you sh should be able to just scroll down to you see WCF web service. You choose that, and I'll just make a duplicate one. But I've already created one. I'll create. I'll call this one API Service too, just so you see how it's added. Okay. So by default, it's going to create an interface file, which is this guy. And the file name is going to uh, have a prefix with I on it. And then over here on this side, you should see another one without the I. This is the actual. The actual methods that will be executing in your your main class so this class actually inherits the interface so anything any interface you provide to it is going to be the actions for the code behind will be in this api cs file without the i okay okay so the next thing you want to do is set up your web config so what I, i've already done this for you but what you want to do as you go in here, this part can be complicated, but after you've done it a few times, or if you just have this project, you can pretty much uh, copy and paste this into your project. So first things that I added in here was the bindings and behaviors. You can copy this and paste it straight to your project. Um, what this does, it allows you to um, enable this web service project to actually return in JSON. Um, what This is one of the things that will bite you. Okay, so copying this will save you a ton of time. Um, one thing to point out, uh, when you deploy your service, uh, right now I have the security mode set to none because we're running it locally. Uh, you want to change this to transport if you're using um, SSL or HTTPS uh, because the service won't work with that and you just go in here and tra change this to transport but we're testing locally so we're going to leave it at none um, the second part is the endpoint behavior which is the service guide um, this enables it to uh, to be a rest based service so you want to make sure that's in there and I've got like some debugging behaviors set up that we won't really be using those but It'll come in handy if we have any issues later. Okay, the next part is the service. Okay, this is the service that we just added. 
Um, just to point out some of the really important parts of this is the name. The name is the name of our project. If you look here, it's the namespace that we're using. And this is what we called our service name. Okay, that's that without the I. Okay, next um, is the actual endpoint, which is what you'll be navigating out to. Um, and here, what we're doing is the behavior configuration. This is our JSON behavior that we created up here that you'll be copying and pasting in your project probably because you won't want to have to manually do this every time. And then our web HTTPS binding. Um, what this allows us to do is it sets all the binding configurations you'll need right here. So timeouts and all of that, size of your message, everything. And then um, here is the name. So this one's going to be Viviscape Ice Cream. That's just what we'll call it. Not, it doesn't matter. You can call it whatever you want. This is just the name of the endpoint. And then contract. Contract is your interface. So again, there's our, our project name and then the interface file. Okay, and then that's it for configuring your web service. This will be included so you can copy and paste most of this. Um, and then for your projects, all you have to do is just change your project name and the name of the service. Um, if you want to, if you have multiple services, you can just copy these and do multiple instances of these and just name it to match your, your second web service, like so. So that's all we would have to do. Okay. All right. Next, what we're going to do is go to um, our actual web service and we're going to work with the one that I already created. Um, so what I've done is I got rid of the, the do work here. I just go in and I just delete that because I never use that. That's just some, uh, some starter code for you. So I get rid of that and then I go in and I get rid of the one without the I. Get rid of that. Okay, so what I've done is in our pre-populated one, what I've done is I've went in and I've created a new method here, just as a test example. Um, what I usually do is I go in and I create a folder for models, and this is going to be my return format. So what I do is I go in, I create a class, like so I say, let's say if I want to make one for users, I right click on this folder and I add a class and I'll just say users and then what it'll do will create a class file in the namespace models make sure you pay close attention to that because you'll be looking at that later and you want to make this public so it's accessible and then what I do is I this little shortcut if you type prop tab tab you can get um, the properties. Uh, it's a little snippet that you can just go in and create these really fast. So user ID, and then I'll do first name. And last name. Just, uh, and you can keep going with this and building it, but this is what I've done with, with the flavor object and then the, the sales object okay all right so just to give this a quick test all you're gonna have to do is go in here to your web service and what I've done is I've just created a object here that's going to return a flavor, a list of flavors, which is the class I just showed you. And by default, this won't show up. So what will happen, it'll, you'll be like this, and you'll get all these errors. What you want to do is you can right-click and choose Resolve, and it'll find 
the namespace or a uh, keyboard shortcut you can hold the control key down and hit the period on your keyboard and it does the same thing select that and then it'll put your namespace in here for you you can do that for anything you're missing if it doesn't find it then you're probably missing a reference and you can just add that here okay so um, what I'm gonna do is I've created a list of flavors and then I'm I'm just creating I'm instantiating a flavor putting some phony information in there I'm adding it to the list this list here of flavors and then I'm returning it okay so this is the name of my method of my endpoint to call all I do is I copy this right here without the public nothing else then I go over to my interface file and I cop I paste it right in and then I just hit a semicolon to close it okay now this this snippet of code here is not usually included it'll just say operation contract so what you'll want to do is is you could pay, paste this for my project or I'll explain this um, your request format means it's accepting JSON properties um, through the request and what's important is the response format which we're responding in JSON so what will happen is this will automatically serialize the list flavors into a JSON object as the return type so you don't have to write any special code to convert it to whatever you want if you for some reason you didn't want to do JSON and you wanted to return XML you can just change that and it'll return it as XML so what some people do is they create two of these and um, do something like this just create two different methods and then you've got it'll do the same call and you just add a different endpoint make sure you copy the contract so what the message type looks like for the method is that um, there's a lot of other ways of doing some things this is just the quick dirty way to create it so this will respond a list of active flavors okay later on um, in the next video we'll show you how to wire up uh, the entity framework and include it into this process but let's go ahead and save this and what I'm going to do is I usually just create a blank file, um, index.html. I just created a blank index.html file. And again, by right click, add item. And you can choose HTML page and just call it index. And then it'll add it here. So what you want to do is when you launch this to your browser, you want to make sure this file select it because if you launch it from this it's going to open up the web service uh, tester which is going to fail because we're not using the typical response type for um, uh, Microsoft's uh, um, response so it's going to fail trying to use that service because we're responding in JSON so um, all you're gonna do is hit select the index and then launch it in Google Chrome it's gonna say I have a problem and that's because I don't have an endpoint for this because I called it something new different sorry about that that was the extra one I added so I'll hit that see what I mean if you launch it from this it'll it won't return anything because it's not a XML response type it's JSON Okay, so if you hit index and then we launch it in Chrome, this thing will pop open and you'll see nothing. Okay, what you want to do is go out here and we're going to take the same, we're going to use that get active flavors, which we're getting from our interface here. Get active flavors. And then we're going to put it right here. And then we're going to hit enter and you're going to get a fail right there sorry I didn't put the name of the service in so you put your service in this is our API service and then get flavors 
and this one should work too, the XML one. So we're responding two different types. So it can be an XML or JSON. Same response type. XML, JSON. So next what we'll, we'll end up doing is showing you how to wire this up to um, a HTML5 uh, web page or index HTML and show how we can use jQuery to um, pull that information into the page and display it. Thank you and see you at the next video.